Happy Embry Wednesday, fellas. I think this will be a Wednesday. Uh, or any day. Happy Homebrew Weekly. Um, just uh, hopefully, I ain't going to waffle on too long. My keys are built. Uh, managed to get hold of a freezer. We had some vouchers and stuff, so picked a freezer up. It's about 680mm by just under 1.2. It's actually 1180mm. Um, yeah, so uh, the depth of it is only about 540 uh, to 600. I had a slight um, issue when I was looking around, looking around. I wanted one with no shelf. He said it had no shelf in it, but there is quite clearly a shelf in it, and I should have realised from the picture from where the cooler is. So hopefully coming up next will be a quick picture of the freezer. Uh, so what that means is my 23 litre kegs, I wanted eight, I can only fit six in. So I have two, four, six, 19 litre ones. So basically on the shelf, I can only have the 19 litres and on the rest of them, there have to be 23, which I was a bit bummed about. Or I could have just downscaled it and only had six kegs. But I just thought, what would I do with the extra space? To be honest, because it's not going to be a freezer freezer, it's only going to be like minus two. I'll just have some small batches. Maybe use those two as my trial, trial beers. So use the 19 litre ones as maybe the trial or sometimes when I don't boil enough, I was at 19 so I'm going to try and be mindful of the time I'm going to apologize if I do run over but uh, today I will hopefully show you the freezer next then we'll go over to the wood shop uh, where I'm gonna do a, a base for it basically just gonna use some stuff I've got kicking around in the shop uh, I've got some old pallet wood that I uh, you might see a clip it of as we go down to the shop the the front of the workshop and everything's in a right old state at the minute um, but yeah gonna plane all that up uh, where I originally was gonna have it she said no nope, can't have it in the dining room I can have it in the conservatory so it but it's got to blend in with the surrounding furniture and I thought oh so I will be putting a collar on it but I'll actually be putting if you like an overcoat so a casing gonna make a an outside casing for it to match similar to a dresser that's in there. So I was gonna do it in oak, but I'm now just gonna do it in pine so I can use up some of the pallet wood, plane it up, put some tongues and grooves and bits and bobs on it, uh, stain it up to match hopefully that I interior furniture. Won't be using the lid, gonna make myself my own sort of lid to drop in beneath the finished top. So it means when I need to take the kegs out, I pull the top off and down take the false lid out, take out the kegs. Uh, the other reason for that is basically going to have like a rear column with the taps on and I'm not sure whether I'm going to have a flip down drip tray or just a drip tray that's there and you just slide it out, do your pints. So you'll be able to see the taps but then behind that will be the column for obviously all the pipes and also there'll be a false front in that bit that drops down with all my gas regulators. Uh, I was hoping to have eight, um, but the, uh, the guy I got them from only had seven, so I've only got seven at the minute. And um, I will hopefully be getting some more. Uh, he does do another version, but because I'd already had three, uh, I wanted them to all look the same. So I've gone for the Micromatic Hopefully you guys can see that. Gas valves, so you good thing with these in, you can have in either way, but you can put them in a row, so you can, and then this is your output. Obviously you can turn it on and off. Uh, the difference on these, they do these, but with a gauge, but they're quite a lot bigger. You can see these aren't massive, um, but they've got the pressures on there. So obviously we're talking, uh, you can set it, and then once it's set, click it shut and it don't turn. Um, I'll put a gauge on there and actually confirm that they are the same as what's coming out but hopefully they're not going to be a million miles away because apparently they're supposed to be quite good. So I'm going to almost make myself like a Pepsi distribution. So each keg I'll have that, obviously one gas bottle coming in, 
and then these splitting off. But like I say, these are going to be, if you like, behind the taps in a false panel that I can just drop down and then I'll have them as one to six, sorry, one to eight. But I've only got seven, but you can put a blanker in the end of it. It comes with a blanker. And if you want to, it comes with a shroud that you can lock it on. So once it's adjusted, but I don't need to put that on because it's only going to be me playing with them. So yeah, put them all on a row so I can adjust the input pressure because obviously I might not always have the same beer on the same line. Uh, that's that's what I'm hoping is going to work out. Whether it's going to work out like that or not, uh, only time will tell. Uh, go up to 45, we ain't going nowhere near that. I think it's about eight, between eight and 10. Um, I'm not going to use them to force carve or anything. I've got a separate conditioning bay or conditioning cube I've made in the garage that I put them in uh, to condition. That's why I had some of these. So let me stop waffling because we're like six minutes. Uh, we'll go and have a quick look at the freezer. There's going to be a keyser. Uh, then we'll shoot to the wood shop, do the plinth first because I want to put it on the plinth. Uh, it's going to have eight wheels on it, casters, should I say, rubber casters that are without a brake that can spin just for ease of movement in the room so I can wheel it about if I need to. Obviously, you know, it give me an option to have the plug coming out the bottom so I can plug it, hide it in the corner. And also, I wanted to put an extension on the side because I'm not going to have the gas bottle inside it. I'm just going to have it on the outside and then with the collar or the gas pipe coming through the collar but with the front on it i'm going to have a couple of doors on it solely ones for the drain bunk in case i don't know knowing me i'll spill a load of beer i need to be able to obviously get the drain bung out uh and it'll match what's in there and then it'll either be a three door two door not decided yet and then on the right hand door is obviously where the controls are now i'm contemplating whether to spike into the controls or just basically wire a ST1000 or something up and go through the collar again, drop it in there and then it's all there in its own little compartment. As I say, so I can take the lid off and it won't affect the freezer. I can mess around with the gas and I can do the temperature. Whether I make the reading up in the panel somewhere so you can see it in the background behind the taps or something, I haven't decided. It's one of those It's going to evolve. I've got an idea in my head. It's going to evolve as I move along. So hopefully we have a bit of fun with this and journey. And like I say, hopefully it doesn't go on for hours and hours. If it does, just fast forward and see the end result. Um, and I'll be staining the wood and stuff. And like I say, with the collar, I will drop the collar down and then fix the collar to the lower base, maybe to the top. Or maybe just have a couple of hooks so as it comes down it sort of slips over the freezer and drops down and then hangs on the collar because the full base is going to sit inside and then the top will just slip on now i might make it recessed around the back so as it slides on it sort of slips under and then hopefully you don't see the join of the top so for uh, all intents and purposes it looks sort of solid apart from i was going to hide the taps and have it so the front completely dropped down and then within the front would be the drip tray and everything and then at the end of the evening you just flip it back up and it covered the beer taps sorry about the light that might still happen as i say i'll see how stupid i get with it but it's not going to be too nothing too major it's literally just going to be ply planed up i'm not going to leave i'm not going to have it roughish sawn like the last cabinet i built i think i will run it through the plane and just take it down to sort of a smoother finish and then obviously give it a cleaner. I might just DA it and then just give it a stain and a bit of polish and that's it. But as I say, don't know. I'll just see how it, how it how, what takes me fancy and what direction we move in. Hopefully it's not gonna turn into the fucking space shuttle or some fucking stupid build like the Great Wall of China. But look, nearly 10 minutes. I'm gonna go now, over to there, then over to there. Sorry about that. Come back in a minute, guys. Right, fellas. There's uh, one a chest freezer. I could have saying controls there. Drain bug over there. Obviously, lid that I'm going to disregard. Uh, one other thing I've got to be mindful of, hopefully you can catch that, is the vent there. Take a peek inside. 
As I said previously, well, there's two shelves. Let me move the shelves out. Because unfortunately, that is what I would class as a shelf. So it actually reduces the height. So it's going to give me more of a collar. Obviously, down this side, it's perfectly fine. You can fit six in there quite happily. This is roughly how far off the wall it's going to be, and the gas cylinder going to be in there with the pipes coming through the collar the regulators along there obviously the taps up there so let's crack over to the workshop have a look at the base that I'm going to make because it's on little wheels I want to be able to move it and make it look a little bit better right fellas that's the spruce ply with a bit of this CLS just laid on it and you can see the CLS over there. Excuse the mess in the shop. I'm in the middle of a, another project. Um, that's basically the three different selections of wheel. So you can see the one with the brake on, um, the 75 and then the 50. I'm hoping the 50 is going to be, or maybe even the 75. I'll go around the other side and explain why, and hopefully you guys can see me. If I do you like that, Hopefully you guys can see that, but you won't see me head. But that's no biggie, is it? So I'll just whip around the other side. So, hopefully, well, you, you can see me if I do that, but you can't see me, but you can see that. So, obviously 50, 7500. Um, there is room in the 50. I don't know if you can see it with that. Just about. Obviously, there's a little bit more room with the 75. It's sort of halfway. Don't know if you guys can see that to the centre of the shaft. Um, so it might be the 75s. I'll go four for eight of them. Just like I say, when I do the over collar, you're going to have a bottom rail. Hopefully, you can see that. And then I can trim the bottom rail because I want it as close to the bottom of the wheels as possible. So when you're looking at it, it looks like it's near enough touching the floor. Now you can get spring loaded ones that you can sort of release and it drops to the deck and then you can take back up but I didn't have any of them. Trying to, after spending on all the taps, trying to do it, not semi on a budget but you know use the stuff I've got. So when the collar goes around on the outside I can do it so we can have it so it just skims the wheels to move it around. Not that I'm going to be moving it around all the time. But it's just handy that if I need to move it, I don't want to have to take all the kegs out. So these ones I'm not going to use. I've come to a conclusion because, like I say, for it to work, it's going to be right over in here. Which might not be a problem. But then we're a lot higher. So you can see, the obviously, the height difference. It's not massive, but it might make a bit of a difference. And then I can set these to be right in the corner. So... I'll come back around there, spin you back around here, just to give you semi another idea to what's going on. One sec. So, sorry for the dodgy camera work. As I said, so there, that's basically, this is upside down. These have got to be cut and glued and fixed. So I'll basically frame it out, two through the middle, just to obviously give that support. And hopefully, if I can put you there, I can then position these so the wheels, watch my hand, this is hard work doing it that way. The wheels will be able to turn freely without fouling there. Like I say, these ones weren't here, the 100mm ones were right over there. So let's stop Kim waffling, get on and cut this, fix the wheels, uh, and I'll be back shortly.